What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I just wanna review McDonald's and a few other stocks. I made a few videos on this prior saying to buy this at 250. So this was a nice I told you so moment. Just looking at it though, there's a lot of factors that influenced me to make this decision at 250 to buy. I sold at 255, that's what I made my target. I was had a stop loss at 246, sold at 255 and it's going on without me. So now watching this, we are looking for a re-entry on this because if you look at the year to date, McDonald's is down a lot of money right now. They're down 300 all the way down to 249, which is 17%. It bounced up to 258, which is excellent. So it's down 14% on the year. So there's still time to get in this if you believe that McDonald's is going to bounce. But because they have their ex-dividend date at June 3rd, I figured we were going to get a nice bounce at the half dollar of 250 plus a few days before, you know, buyers are going to step up and get that dividend that McDonald's offers. Now, this might be a stock that I might add when it comes to the YouTube portfolio, but we'll see. I want to see a retest here. We have this nice V-shaped recovery, as you can see. And what I want to see now is... I want to see it trend down a little bit. Let's see if it pulls back and comes back to this 253 area for a re-entry is what I'm going to be looking for. So if you look here, it is testing resistance all in this area right here. So this is a resistance zone. We got to see. McDonald's was trading from 257 to 259 in this area, sold off, and now it's retesting this area. Look how high this RSI is. R I RSI is 85 right now. So this is a great example of a break. So it broke this and now it's retesting it. So let's see if McDonald's chooses to sell off, go from 259 back down to 253. And then will it, you know, make its move back up? Or what it could do is we could break this 260 level form a base and that is a that's an indicator to go long so if it can break this level at 260 it's got to break this level right here and that's not going to be easy that's no easy feat so it's going to have to break this level here go above 260 retest the 260 level prove that this area is support and then blast off that's what i'm looking at mcdonald's so if we get a pullback I'm not going to be afraid to buy. I'm going to buy in this 253 to 254 range, start getting some shares in there. But if it breaks 253, I got to cut the loss because anything below 249 is going to keep going lower. So it's something we got to keep in mind with that. But if you break the 260 and we start holding this level, you could get a nice break and retest and then a bounce higher. So definitely keep an eye on that for McDonald's. The next stock I want to break down is an ETF and it was trading year to date at 400 and went all the way down to 380, which is a 5% pullback. But it recently in the last day, it just went up 2%. So it's at negative 3% on the year. So I definitely would keep an eye out for this. This has potential to make a move bigger, much higher. Cause as you can see, we have a nice bullish channel. Let me just show you really quick right from here. This is where DIA has been trading, and this is an excellent trend line. You can see that it's just trading within this, this frame right here. So we def definitely have some wiggle room. We are in the middle of this trend channel right here, which is around 380. But we just have to see if this is going to break 400 and make new highs. Now, they usually say sell in May and go away, but now we're entering June, so this is going to be very interesting. So dollar cost average, I could see that perspective. I would not be like putting all my chips in at this price. I got to see what is it going to do? Is it going to break 400 or is it going to make new lows and break 378? Definitely something to check out there. SCHD, that ETF as well, is kind of very similar where it was, it was flatline bottom. And now it's hitting a double bottom right here. It's retesting this. As you can see here, you had support here. I mean, sorry, resistance here, resistance here broke the resistance and now it was selling it but it's got the the resistance at 80.82 so i'm definitely watching that as well just keep an ear out for it nvidia this that is an indecision candle 
if you ever want to see one. Uh, the sellers right here, a thousand ten seventy, and then eleven fifty eight. It's going the last five days. It's hovering at eleven hundred. We have to see if Nvidia is going to continue to make new highs. You know, before it's split, it might just keep going up. So I definitely be cautious if you're shorting this stock, but definitely has potential. So just keep an eye out for it. Amazon is finally kind of break, making a little bit like new lower lows. It went from in the five days, 184 down to 176. But more importantly, what matters is the one month. You can see it went from 191.7, pumped all the way, down to 173, down almost 9%, back up to 176, so it's down 7, 8%. And when you look at this in the grand scheme of things, it looks like it's trading at the top of the mountain. But you also have to use the trend channel. On Weeble is what I'm using. I'm marking a trend channel like this, and that's the channel we're in. So it's just been bouncing in just like this. So if it can hold this level of 173, I will be interested for a push higher back to retest the 190 level. But the reason I'm so cautious about it is I could see right here, you have a top here at 189 and then another top here at 189. And it did break it, made it a little higher as at 192 almost. But look how thin this candle is. Basically indecision, no buyers up here. And now it's starting to sell off a little bit. And it's got its nice little trend. So we'll have to wait and see here. I kind of want to see Amazon pull off a little more and form a base potentially in this 166 area because you have a little bit of support here, a little bit of support here. And let's see where it goes from here because you could say that this is an inverse. I'm sorry, a head and shoulders where you see the head here, the arm here, and then the arm's going to form over here and then start selling off potentially. So I definitely would just keep an eye on that because... Big cap tech stocks are definitely overbought right now. Looking at the overall QQQ, you know, tech has been on a monster run year to date. I mean, 394 all the way up to 460. Let's just look at that percentage gain. If you just bought on the first day of 2024 in QQQ, you're up 16%. That's, that's a year's, almost more than a year's gain. What more could you ask for? So just looking at that, I think we're going to get some profit taking. I mean, I don't know how much more greedy we can be here. In one year, 340 up to 460, incredible gains. Five years, 160 up to 460. Just five years buying the same fund. Look at those gains, incredible. So I'm hoping we get some kind of pullback here. And we'll see, maybe retest that 415 level. You just got to be careful because you'll look at all these other stocks. Look at Google. They're starting to, you know, they were $83. Now they're 178 so as you can see, these stocks are pumped to the max, juice to the gills. Now I'm looking at HD, Home Depot. This is a stock that I want to potentially get in long term because looking at the five-year trajectory, just look at the max. I mean, it just trades in this nice up, upwards channel. And I want to get them like around like three, 300 to 305. That would be like golden for me right there where I, I could hold them long term. Intel sold off again, 40, $43 down to $30. We just look at them in the last five days. They've been hovering in this 29 to 30 range. I think they're going to make lower lows. I mean, they, they're getting pretty close where they're just retesting $29 again, 29.73. Keep an eye on for that. Tesla, as you can see, we are just hovering in this area. And there were so many times that I thought about buying in this like 175 range and I didn't pull the trigger and just all of the gains from 174 to 178 just nice pullbacks up to 187 back down to 174 back up to 179 I mean there's so many opportunities but I'm just I, I don't know I'm just biased I hold them long term in the taxable as you guys know but I'm worried that if we break this level we're just going to sell back down to 150s and that's what I've been waiting so I can add but I'm not buying just yet at 177 i'm being cautious about them what i think is the dark horse in all of this is sqqq the inverse you look at year to date it is down you look at over one year it's down over you know 50 percent five years it's down a bazillion percent you know these are swing trades in qqq but if we get a pullback qq starts pulling starts going back up and we get a pullback down to like 9.6 i'm not gonna be afraid i'm not gonna hesitate i'm gonna buy some sqq shares as well look at the track record don't hold them long term you could definitely lose your money in this that decays over time but that's definitely something i am watching